All right, gentlemen, a lot to unpack from this one. I do want to begin with Purdy here because this is a team that has everything you need to make a run and win a Super Bowl. Then they lose Jimmy G. The defense stands tall. Purdy answers some questions here, uh, but then that is overshadowed by Debo Samuel. We'll get to it all, even the Tampa Bay side. But first thought here goes to Brian McFadden on Brock Purdy, the way he performed today. Hey, man, the young kid ball. He played lights out. He played with confidence. The moment never was too big for him. He was extremely smart with the football. And I love Brock showcasing his athletic ability. You know, making people miss, getting a little smooth in the pocket, trying to make things happen with his legs as well. I love that. You saw a guy that played with energy. You saw a guy that didn't play with any nerves. He just allowed everything to flow. He ran into a hot kitchen and he came out with a bowl of water. That was an outstanding <laughs> performance for a guy making his first start against a team that has playoff aspirations. Let's keep it real. So I love what I saw from Brock Purdy. I love the, the game plan offensively that Kyle Shan Shanahan had, had for, block, for Brock Purdy. If you look at the, the start of the ball game, I think it was three straight passes. They came out firing. So they weren't conservative, conservative at all. So let's see, can he continue to build on this performance? Because this is a team that we all believe have deep playoff aspirations in regards to making a deep playoff run. They talked about the loss to Debo. We will hit on that. But all in all, A-plus coming from Brock Purdy in my eyes. So two plays stick out for me, B-Mac. Midway through the second quarter, Brock Purdy throws a dime to Christian McCaffrey in the corner of the end zone. Christian McCaffrey makes a great catch. That's a throw that if any quarterback makes, we're talking about it. It's an incredible throw. Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen. Tom Brady, whomever. And then at the end of the first half, 22 seconds to go, Brock Purdy throws an interception to Anthony Nelson. It was overturned because of penalty. The very next play comes back to Brandon Ayuk on a double move. Ayuk smokes Jamel Dean, makes a fantastic catch in the end zone on a ball that was slightly underthrown. Brock Purdy took a huge hit in the process but still made the play, stared down the receiver, took the hit, and that told me all I needed to know. We talked about this last week. It ain't like he's coming into an offense where there's nothing around him, like, say, the Denver Broncos. Brock Purdy's coming into a – the best-case scenario situation, Kyle Shanahan's calling the plays. That offense is full of game changers. The def offensive line is really good, and the defense is the best in football. Everything checks the box. All you have to do, as Bill Belichick says, is do your job. Brock Purdy did that and then some, and he made Tom Brady look like he was legit 45 years old and did not want to be out there from start to finish. All right, so maybe this 49ers team can survive an injury to not only their starting quarterback early in the season, their second-string quarterback, former starting quarterback a week ago, Brock Purdy steps into that role. They do have offensive weapons that can step into the role of Debo Samuel. That'll be spread love between McCaffrey, Ayuk, the other go-to guys on that offense. We don't know the extent yet of Debo Samuel's injury. It did not look good. Some initial reports are out there. We'll address the reports when it comes from Kyle Shanahan's mouth, but Debo Samuel and what he brings to this offense, Ryan Wilson, that cannot be filled in. Is there an injury that this 49ers team cannot withstand. I know that's a funky way of asking the question, but it seems like they're almost non-cyclical. They come back today with a new quarterback. They score a bunch of points. They make the GOAT look like nothing. Here we're taking a look at this gruesome injury, Ryan. Debo, depending on how long he's out for, is this the knockout blow for the 49ers? You know, Joe, I was thinking about this when Debo was getting carted off, as we see here, obviously very emotional. Debo Samuel might be a bigger loss to this offense than Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm. No disrespect to Jimmy G, who's had a great year, but it feels like with Kyle Shanahan calling the plays and all the things I laid out just a moment ago, you can put a quarterback in there who's competent and he can get done what you want to get done. That's been pretty much the tenure of Kyle Shanahan calling plays in San Francisco whenever his number one goes down. We've seen them have success. But you need the playmakers around that uh replacement level quarterback or mm -hmm. game manager, whatever you want to call it, to help out that quarterback. And Debo Samuel is that. And I think the good news is, and, you know, fingers crossed Debo's healthy, but if he can't go for some time, that's the reason he went out and got Christian McCaffrey. And I was concerned mm -hmm. at first with all that San Francisco gave up for Christian McCaffrey because they had Jeff Wilson, they had Raheem Mostert in the past. Those guys were, were having success in Kyle Shanahan's offense. Christian McCaffrey's a different dude, and we saw that today, and we've seen that since he's arrived in San Francisco. Now, he can't pick up all the productivity that Debo would give you, but it's a good start. Now, ideally, Debo will be back, if not next week, maybe soon before the playoffs, uh, but I, I'll stick with what I said. I, I think that Debo, losing Debo, might be uh, more damaging to this team's long-term success than, than even a Jimmy G. I agree, because the thing about losing Debo Samuel, you're losing two players in one. You're losing your best wide receiver, you, you're losing your best playmaker, but don't forget, he is your best 
running back outside of Christian McCaffrey. And the versatility that he brings to their offense is something you can't you can't repeat with another player. Then you're talking about losing your best playmaker when you're playing with your your third string quarterback. You're playing with your third string quarterback. So, yes, I think they have enough to win their division because I think the wheels are starting to fall off the, the, the truck a little bit with Seattle. They have a difficult stretch coming up. But in regards to making a deep postseason run and trying to get to a championship, if they don't have a healthy Debo Samuel, I understand their defense, their lights out. But playing with your third string quarterback, that kitchen will get extremely hot in postseason <laughs> play. That's a different heat than what you feel in the regular season. It's a hibachi hot in postseason play. And that's a tall task to ask of your third string quarterback and Brock Purdy to be able to win ball games for you, especially if he's missing one of his best playmakers. But hopefully CMC can provide the spark that they will need to have in the absence of Debo Samuel. But I agree with you, Ryan. Yes, they can win their division still without Debo. But in regards to trying to get to Arizona for the final game in the regular seat in the season mm -hmm. this year, it's going to be hard to do that without Debo. All right, a parting thought here on Brady and the Bucks, and maybe it's just that. There's this thought process that you can't let Tom in the tournament, and it's a division that remains up for grabs. Can we kind of put that thought process to rest, Ryan Wilson, after this one? Is this a dangerous team in Tampa Bay at all? As a middle-aged middle -aged man, I don't want to, you know, crap all over another middle-aged man and Tom Brady. But I've been saying this for some time on the Pick 6 podcast. Like, Tom Brady, the aura, the legacy of Tom Brady, that's very real. Greatest of all time for a reason. But the man can't do it by himself. And that's what he's been asked to do. And that was, uh, you know, to quote our guy Lee Flowers, that was a paper champion win last week when they beat Andy Dalton in prime time <laughs> in the game of his life against the Saints. The Saints are not a good football team. This was a different animal. Tom Brady had few answers because there was nothing around him to help. And now he made some interceptions. He made some poor decisions. But there's only so much you can do against a team as good as the 49ers. Those are the type of teams you, pay, you play in the tournament, as BMAC likes to call it. And I'm just not buying this. You can let Tom Brady into the, to the playoffs if you want to, and I think it'll be one and done. Mm. Uh, the only thing they have going for them is going to win that division. I think they're only one game up in Carolina, and they'll get a home game. And maybe that gives them some boost in the playoffs. But otherwise, this team has been done for some time for me. And, and I, I think Tom Brady is probably doing something else a year from now, whether it's on another team or at home, but I think we've seen him uh, down the home stretch for the Buccaneers here. All right, fantastic stuff as always, fellas. We'll get set for the Sunday Nighter in just a bit. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.